Hello, welcome to 13 Universal Learning Beyond Barriers, and this is A Level Biology with Shedrow. So, we are starting a new series, a new component. Um, this is P5 Planning, Analysis, and Evaluation. This is Paper 5 A2 Syllabus. Okay, so come on, let's solve some questions on this. Okay, so the first question we're going to do, we're going to be solving. Uh, we we'll deal with planning. Then the second question, you know, question one deals with a lot of planning and all of that method, you know, defining the problems. And then the question two would we'll deal with analysis, evaluation, and conclusion. All right, let's go to the first question. Please, the first thing you have to know about this question, uh, this paper, is that you have to, just like what we always said, be able to remember. You know the background information and then use your imagination um, to connect what they are saying what the question is saying to what you've done in the lab okay so this is an advanced part of your paper 3 in paper 3 you were meant to follow instruction paper in paper 5 you're going to use high order thinking skills to design an experiment and then analyze and of course evaluate experimental data okay so let's go on. Fruit in the diet can be in the diet can be a source of vitamins such as vitamin C and vitamin A, okay, which are important in maintaining good health. Very important. Vitamin A is a group of molecules that includes retinol and retinol. Vitamin C is an organic acid known as ascorbic acid. Ripening occurs in fruit when molecular changes cause an increase in sugar content okay sugar content can pay attention to all of that all right so that's ripening of course remember there's always a clue to your answer in the background information background context pay attention changes okay when molecular changes cause an increase so ripening of course how or when when molecular changes of cause an increase in sugar content color changes and softening of the fruit over time <laughs> over time okay sugar content color changes and so okay ascorbic acid is found in plant cells if i were you while i'm doing this exam I'm, I'm i'm just underlining some of this key stuff ascorbic acid in in is found in plant cells the fruit of many plants have high concentrations of ascorbic acid a student can can a student plan all right plans to investigate how ascorbic acid concentration changes with ripeness in the fruit of uh, apple tree malus domestica I hope you know you're ready for solving this question okay so they're giving us about background information so this student plans to investigate how ascorbic acid concentration changes with ripeness in the fruit of this apple tree this apple mm, i love apple very sweet and crunchy but it's, it's a one apple keeps you one apple every day keeps you away from the doctor have you eaten apple today guys enjoy yourself let's go to the next information back information all right yeah now look at the question you know the student removed an apple that was 5 cm in diameter from a tree the student measured the sugar content of the apple which was low so 5 cm measure was low remember the told us that the sugar content increases with time right um over time this indicated that the apple was at the early stages of ripe and that was why the sugar content was low so connect the dots guys you must read this question thoroughly there must be massive reading don't rush it in exam guys do not rush it but however think through it so it must be connecting the dot this indicated that the apple was at the early stages of ripening all right for the investigation the student decided to select apples from trees when each apple was 5 cm in diameter so he decided to use 5 cm uh, the student assumed that the ripeness of each app apple would increase each day so each day okay pay attention after it had been picked from a three that's assumption guys the same apple i love apple apple juice fresh one 
Now, I suggest why the diameter of the apples selected may not give accurate estimates of ripeness. So, so they're going to be, you know, remember that when you are reading any any question in paper five, you must be able to identify your independent variable okay, for the investigation, which is the variable that you are changing. All right, and you must identif identify your dependent variable, which is the one you are measuring. And of course, your constant variables are very key variables, the ones you standardize. So you can you see which one is, is the student changing here? The student assumed that the ripeness of each app would increase each day. So time, all right? Time, all right, um, actually is affecting ripeness, okay? So it now says, um, but you want to say that this will affect it. 5 cm in diameter. So the 5 cm in diameter should affect it. So suggest why diameter of the appleness, apples selected may not give accurate estimate of ripeness. So why should the diameter, does, the question is, does diameter affect ripeness? Is this an independent variable? Does this 5 cm diameter, right, size, does size, okay, affect this ripeness? Is this an independent variable that affect this dependent variable ripeness? Okay, so that they say suggest so why the method may not give accurate. So pause it, the video and try to answer the question. Why would it not give accurate? Now, now I, hope you, I hope you know that. Hmm? I want to suggest that um, you see um, different apples, all right, ripen at different at different time or with different rate okay so even though they have the same size okay use your imagination guys imagine this is apple tree in your compound have you have you noticed sometimes you come this one is ripe and this one is not ripe and even though they are the same size so there are other factors that affect ripeness all right of apple okay so um this size may not affect it the size may not affect it but it doesn't have anything size doesn't have any correlation with ripeness okay so what factors other factors that could affect it right um factors like maybe um environmental temperature okay you know other factors um that could affect it um like um you know based on maybe each individual apple right their genetic factor there okay all right, so it depends on the position of the apple. Now, that that is a suggestion. Let's look at what Maskim says, okay? Now, look at what Maskim says. I did that size of apple may not be related. Yes, it may not be related to proportion to ripeness. Now, this is your imagination. They are testing this question. Anytime they use suggest, testing your ability to think outside the box, okay? Can you think? Use your imagination. Use your imagination. So this is a skill being tested here. All right. So nobody taught you that we're going to connect the dot um, using your imagination and the concept you've learned. Number two says ideas that individual apples may may ripen at different rates. Yes, individual. These two apples may ripen at different rates. Okay, if you have seen a, a fruit tree before, you you know that. Okay. So there are other factors. Idea that factors may affect ripeness of apple. All right. The diameters of apple. The other factors that may affect it. Okay. So just one more, guys. Let's run. Describe the improvement to the method of selecting the apples. All right, that would give more accurate estimate of ripeness. Describe the improvement. How do you improve? All right, on selecting the apples that will give more accurate estimate of ripeness. How do you know? Okay, um, whether an apple is ripe. How do you know which factors are you going to use? Okay, remember at the beginning, pause this video and try it. Just pause it and try it. Okay, just one more question. Solve this question. Now, um, describe says you should give major characteristics, okay, or sequence of events. So you, you you can improve on this experiment by using the color, right? The color of the apple show can be used to estimate the ripeness. So the color of the apple, you know, some of them may be all right, okay, um, orange, yellow. Is getting you know ripen, getting all uh, yellow, okay, and then you, you then measure the ripen. You can also measure ripeness by um, determining the amount of 
reducing sugar in the apple is that okay you can also use softness touch the apple is it soft all right so one of these pick apples with the same similar sugar content okay sugar content that you can use it sugar content by measuring the amount of sugar or the color of the apple softness or age okay can be used to determine the ripeness that these apples have the same age they should ripen at the same time their color looks similar the two apples have similar color they should have the same uh, they should ripen at the same time to estimate ripeness okay you can also use the softness all right test measure sugar content all right remember that anytime they use describe you're going to use need action word sequence procedure pick apples to it with the same or similar okay color it and then test or measure so the sugar content here is a way of measuring or estimating ripeness so if i pick sugar, uh, apples that have different colors all right and then and i now measure okay extract the juice measure the sugar content all right all right all right that could help too now just one mark now the student research how ascorbic acid concentration changes with ripeness in the fruit of other species all right based on this research the student predicted on this student this student must be a genus okay powerful biologist that's good uh, the student predicted that ascorbic acid concentration in apples will guys remember one of the skills i've been tested here is evaluation scale okay so they just want to know how you think about other people's work so they said based on this research the student predicted that ascorbic acid in apples will be lowest in unripe okay in unripe apple when they are first picked from the tree okay increase over several days and peak in partially ripe apples decreases slightly in later days as the apples become fully ripe okay that's it they just described the trend of the concentration of ascorbic acid right at over time sketch a line graph below including labeled axes to show the predicted results so pause this video and try to sketch it remember our drill here is that we solve the question we solve it okay we solve the question so try to solve it so i'm gonna try it now um so if this is the graph this is vertical axis this is horizontal remember that independent variable is on the horizontal right horizontal independent what's independent variable what is affecting the ripening here okay is the time time they picked it time time they picked the apple so i can just pick time here right remember that when i pick time i should put the unit maybe days or hours all right but you know it's days okay then here should be concentration of ascorbic acid so i'm gonna okay concentration i'm not gonna write it fully because that is what we're measuring that's the dependent variable all right is always on the x as dependent what you're measuring okay we measure ascorbic acid all right concentration of ascorbic acid that's been affected time is what is affecting it that's independent this time always on x axis see okay concentration of ascorbic acid of ascorbic ascorbic acid okay do you like ascorbic acid that's vitamin c it provides him immunity to the body five germs okay so that's what they said one apple every day keeps the doctor away all right because it boosts your immunity you are able to fight all kinds of diseases stimulate your immune immunity immune cells okay ascorbic acid so now remember guys they're already giving us a clue okay lowest in unripe when they're first peak that's this is zero okay moving like this so it should be lowest here and then it increases over several days and then decreases slightly when it peaks it peaks so just pardon my drawing but let's do it guys come on yeah it start picking lowest there which is the okay peak and then decreases all right why did i do that because that's what decreases slightly okay yeah stays there all right let's see what the mask says okay so answer 
yeah correct axis label so you must label the axis one mark correct shape of line one mark all right let's look at it so you see as copy can see it on y axis because it is a the dependent variable must be on the y axis okay time it should be down here is a mistake it should be here okay this time should be here so time is dependent now you should also put if we are given um unit unit should be attached to this this is days attached to it all right just two marks there's a lot guys the student was provided with 0 0.01 mole per dm cube of stock solution on dcpip okay uh dcpip does it die redox dies after preliminary research the student decided to dilute the stock the stock solution to prepare 0 0.005 all right, mole per dm cube of solution to use in the experiment. The student, you needed to dilute, so you're gonna add water to that. The student, the student used two steps to dilute the stock solution to 0 0.005 mole per dm cube, DCPIP solution. Complete the description of the two steps for the dilution by adding the correct values to the state sentences, okay? Step one. The student mixed 10 cm cube or 0.01 mole per dm cube of DCPIP stock solution with dash of distilled water because you are diluting, you're going to be adding water. Dash of distilled water, dash cm cube of distilled water to produce solution A. Okay? S solution A had a concentration of 0.001. Okay? 0.001 mole per dm cube. So, so try to fix this fry this fish i'm hungry okay fry this fish guys now look at the second fish to fry the student then mixed that same cube of solution a with right 50 cm cube of distilled water to produce the 0 0.0005 more per cube the cpip solution guys now this is dealing with dilution okay in our videos i've spent time to in advanced practical skills paper three videos i, I discussed it a lot but, but let's do it okay but pause this video try to do it by yourself okay try to do it all right step one step two we're looking for this volume here and this volume here you know don't forget guys that in dilution okay remember that this is the one you start with is a stock solution right this is a stock solution so you want to dilute um stock solution mm -hmm. This contains, um, of course, my stock um, DCPIP. Um, yep. Yeah. And of course, if you go back to that step one, you will realize, find that they said, because they mentioned they were diluting. 10 cm cube of this was going to be that this is stock. So stock is the one you're diluting, okay? So this is, my stock is going to be here. I'm going to take from here, put here, and then add water. Okay, so my stock there, I'm going to take, so what's the volume of my stock that I'm taking to add to this beaker? That, and then, um, then that will determine the amount of water I'm adding. So this is volume of water. Okay, and that is what they are asking us to calculate. What is the volume of water you are adding to dilute? Okay, this is V1, that's the volume of your stock you are adding. Remember that your stock has a concentration, we we'll call this C1. All right, that's concentration according to this question is 0, 0.0, okay? 0 0.01 mole per dm cube. That's the stock concentration. We want to dilute this stock, all right, to produce solution A. So solution A will have a concentration. That's the final concentration C2. We want to dilute, produce this concentration. Um, and that will be zero point. That's second concentration, the final concentration here. All right, zero point what? Zero zero one. Okay, how do we produce that? All right, remember that we have already been given um, V one. That is the volume of stock to dilute ten cm cube. All right, so our V one is ten cm cube here. So 10 cm cube is our V1, 10 cm cube. So what we need to get is V2. V2 is by the time we have added 10 cm cube of that 
um, stock solution and then the volume of water the final volume of water which is v2 okay will be what will it be because if we're able to get it then we can get volume of water because v2 don't forget is always v1 that is v1 is the volume of your stock plus v of water okay v of water don't forget this so we are looking for v2 right so that we from there we can get our v of water v1 has been given to us so but don't forget guys the formula that says c1 v1 that's the dilution formula mm -hmm. don't forget to use it equals um c2 v2 very important okay now we're looking for v2 here therefore v2 will be what v2 will be equal to what equal to c1 all right v1 all over c2 good so get your calculator let's punch some figures now let's see so my c1 is what is stock okay this is my c1 0 0.01 v, v1 is 10 cm cube that's the amount of stock i'm using and then c2 is the solution i'm producing the concentration i'm producing which is solution a the concentration there so guys so this would now be zero point okay zero one which is my c1 times v1 which is 10 okay so hope you're solving this divided by my c2 which is zero okay point zero zero one okay so point to the calculator it will give you v2 will be what point it you will get 100 so v2 is 100 cm cube is that okay that's 100 cm cube 100 cm cube do you get but we're not looking for v2 we're looking for volume of water okay so we're going to need this formula now we have a v2 so volume of water will be what so minus v1 from volume of water do you get so volume of water sorry, sorry from v2 so we equal to be equal to v2 which is total volume final volume minus v1 which is volume of your stock solution initial volume okay so v2 is 100 that's 100 though it's not uh, it's 100 please 100 cm cube all right 100 right minus v1 which is 10 okay you can pause the video or watch it over and over so our v of water is now 90 cm okay cube so what should be here is 90 90 right shouldn't take time same cube of water okay we are done with that so let's go to step two step two says the student then mixed dash of solution a with 50 cm cube of dc water to produce this so they now use now we produce solution a this solution i want to use solution a to produce another solution okay and this is going to be the concentration of that solution so if i should extend this okay so, um let me extend this but i want you also to pause the video and try to get that fish fried all right so this is another solution i want to produce okay we're diluting this solution here so this is going to be my c2 here that's the final concentration and and this is it here okay so this this c2 is 0 0.0005 okay this is my c1 now this has become my c1 because this is solution a so i want to use solution a to produce that that's what the question says okay the question says the student then makes that all right of solution a okay that of solution a the volume of solution a that was used is the is what we need to calculate which is now become v1 okay because i'm moving from solution a to a new one so the volume of the stock or whatever i'm using to dilute it is v1 and of course i'll need to also uh, know 
they've given us um, volume of water which is 50 cm cube mm -hmm. so this is volume of water so what I need to calculate is my V1 right is that okay mm -hmm. my V1 so if I'm moving from solution A to this this becomes my C1 it used to be my C2 but now it's my C1 okay because I'm going to use it to make another concentration. So you've got my C1 here. All right. So the volume I'm taking from here is my V1. The final volume is my C2, which is the, so the final concentration is 0 0.005. So my C2. So, um, well, you know, what is my V2? That's the question. V2 is going to be the same, all right, with the original one, which is 100. Okay. So by the time I add, you know that um, <laughs> you don't need to solve this question. If my V2, you just need to get V1, right? So V2 is already 100 cm cube. Do you see how simple it is? Yeah. But if you want to check, you can use, if V2 is 100 cm cube, we know. Okay. So what would be my V1? V1, won't it be V2, which is that 100 hmm, minus volume of water? That's V2 minus volume of water. Okay. Yeah, volume of water. So that's V2 minus volume of water. Volume of water is already 50. So 100 minus 50 is what? So V2 is 100. Okay. Yes, minus 50, which is volume of water. Okay. That gives me 50. So my V1 is. 50 all right 50 so so um let me know 50 cm cube you know i hope you're enjoying this guys all right now so here should be 50 yeah 50 cm cube all right that will take it if you don't want to calculate it that way you can also use another formula that says v1 okay equals all right um c2 you know that v2 uh huh. Over what? C1. Okay. So if you want to calculate, which is C2 is 0 0.005. Okay. 0 0.0005 times 100, which is V2. Okay. Then divided by 0 0.01, which is C1. That gives you, okay. Well, that may not work here. So, but but if you look at this, hmm, that should give you 50, but it's logical. Hmm? Yeah. If you're moving from, oh, yes, yes, we're right. So, but our C1, okay, let's let's do it. Let's do it. I have to do it now to prove something. Yes. Yeah. So, our C2 here is 0. Point, sorry for the time we're taking, but, you know, it also want to deepen you so that you understand, All right? Was, that's another way to calculate V1 if you don't want to use the simple method times 100 is a V2 okay 100 yeah 100 that's 100 over C1 which is that of um, the concentration of solution A which is 0 0.0 um, 0 0.01 so if you punch your calculator, right, and say 0 0.0005 times 100, okay, that gives you what? 0 0.05, then divided by 0 0.001. That gives you 50. So it's same way 50. This is same way. Either way is, okay, same value 50, right? But the easier way is to use v2 equals v1 plus volume of water okay so this is the easier formula for this easier formula okay yeah all right so you can watch this over and over so let's see what the masking says okay see the answer the first one 90 okay see the first one is 90 90 50 50 let's go to next question two marks this CPIP changes color. So it changes color from blue to colorless when it is reduced by ascorbic acid. So it changes color 
The volume of DCPIP that can, re can be reduced by ascorbic acid is a measure of the concentration of ascorbic acid present. Okay, so you see they have established a relationship here. All right, so the volume of DCPIP, that's why I said read it in between the line. Read it, look out for relationships for patterns, trends. The volume of DCPIP that can reduce. Can, that can be reduced by ascorbic acid is a measure of the concentration of ascorbic acid present in the solution. That means the higher the concentration of ascorbic acid, then the volume of DCPIP that can be reduced will increase. So the volume of DCPIP is that can be reduced is directly proportional to the concentration of DCPIP present in the solution. That's a relationship. Okay. Now, have it in mind. So when all ascorbic acid present in the solution has reacted with DCIP. Any more DCPIP that is added to remain blue, okay? That That is um, an end point. The student had access to standard laboratory equipment and burette. DCPIP solution can be added to a burette and release one drop at Y at a time by turning a tap. Okay, this is the figure, guys. So they always give you diagrams. Diagrams are clues. There are stimulus mat stimulus stimulus materials to make you think in a way so this is the conical flax this is the, the apple extra juice now this is a bullet that contains this cpf solution so they put it drop by drop once they drop it here it, it decolorizes they continue to drop it they continue to drop it until it no longer decolorizes if it does not decolorize that means we have reached end point so you now determine the volume of the cpip used starting from the initial volume right to the final volume so that is a product of the concentration of ascorbic acid present in this apple extract juice solution. Okay. All right. This is it. So let's go for that. You have to understand every setup, um, every material before you. Okay. So the question says 1.1 shows a beauty setup for this investigation. You can see that. Describe a method. Now, these are about nine marks. Nine marks. Pause this video and try to solve it. All right. But let's go. Describe a method the student could use to prepare apple extract. So how do you prepare this apple extract? Mm -hmm. This is extract means liquid. How do you convert solid apple to liquid? This goes in your mind. I remember what you did in the lab when you were doing practicals. This is solid apple. Okay. How do you get this apple to become an extract? Okay. I love apple. How do you convert this to this first? Comes to your mind. Okay. Now, describe a method. The student could be used, can use to, first of all, see, you, you must take care of this. Prepare apple extra solutions from the fruit. Collect the result needed to show the changes in the ascorbic acid concentrations as the apples ripen using this IP. So, um, how do you measure the ascorbic acid concentrations as the apple ripen? So, um, we're going to measure something. Whatever we measure is our what dependent variable. Okay. All right. Okay. So, and 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 of course, our independent variable here will be what? Of course, time, time over time. Let's see what happens. The description of your method should be set out in a logical way and detailed enough for another person to follow. You should not repeat the details from C1 describing how to. Don't repeat how you diluted it. Okay. So this is a nine mark question. That's method. It has the highest mark in paper five. Okay. So the template is could you have, you have learned the first thing you have to do is identify your independent variable. Your independent variable here is time. Okay. And of course days. Right. So and of course identify it and then have values for it interval. I can decide to say of course to to identify it you must know have the range of value so from zero day zero to five days i can decide to use five days all right or i can decide to say um zero to ten days all right um ten days so i want to measure the ascorbic as concentration over this time but you see um that's my range my interval i can say okay let me do one day one day two so uh, the range the, the interval is the same 24 hours day three okay so each of these days i measure the uh, prepare um apple extract solution and measure the ascorbic acid concentration right so this is these are my my values
okay one day two okay three four if i'm using this i can decide to use two um and i jump again four so i must be able to know the values and then maybe list it okay six you know that eight and ten right that's eight right and ten ten one zero okay so so you plug apple how do you vary this so all right so this is my independent apple days or time so you're independent my dependence to measure this well let, let, let me because you must start with independent variable um how do you vary it you must state how you vary it okay now um apples of course and you're going to write this without using any interpersonal pronouns and all of that okay another person was able to follow it okay so the apples are of course the apples are plucked and stored in the same conditions all right okay now don't forget that there are key variables that can affect this like the type of apple the age the the storage condition should be standardized should be the same okay should be the same don't forget that all right um yes so the apple each of these apples are they are okay for example in day one on day one the apple one of them is taken and converted to juice like we've done here okay so to prepare an extra juice extra juice how do you convert this because you have to describe that you have to describe how you convert the apple to juice extra so what you do is remove the apple skin and the seed okay and blend it using a uh, okay or grind it and then feel tight so you can get only the juice you remove the fiber mm? so that's you get the juice on day one okay so what do you do when you get the juice then you have to then take the same quantity now the same volume for day one day two they will be taken all right the same um quant volume put in a conical flask and then run the cpip solution right dropwise into the conical flask until end point is reached end point is when it does not change color and they measure the volume so measure the volume of the cpip required to reach end point okay you measure it All right so you could repeat this for minimum of three times and calculate the average you know how we do it in paper three in the lab okay i'm just listing it and then the same is repeated for day two day three day four day five okay so um, other things you, you need to talk about is what is the hazard here the hazard here you're dealing with the cpip is a chemical it may be irritant or allergic or corrosive you wear gloves you're dealing with um, apple juice it may be an irritant too wear gloves okay that's all guys it's as simple as that all right so you plan the template look at it okay use your mind imagination go back to when you were in the lab okay all those practicals you did but you see um it's something so identify your independent variable identify your dependent variable and your key variables so for independent variable what you do is very dependent you measure and they would have given you clues there are clues on this question on how to go about each of them okay then use your imagination all right your dependent variable your, your constant variable is standard is standardized guys watch this now see ideal okay test okay or at least five days i've listed that use apples from same trees so this is your standard variable because it, so they must come from the same trees of the type use same status storage condition for apples then but what you see when you're writing this you're writing it in an essay form in a prose form okay like for example apples are plucked uh five apples um, um, apples are plucked from the tree and stored under the same condition okay in the one okay an apple is taken to prepare the extra juice by removing um the the back and the seeds and it's grounded and then filter to produce the apple extra juice okay a particular volume is put into a conical flask and of course the dc pipe is run you see step by step so that someone can follow it right so but all of this these are the conditions the template so you describe what what is happening here now prepare apple extract that's remove the skin seed method grind centrifuge or filter place stated volume yeah this this must be standardized stated volume of extra solution conical flax 
that the volume must be for every 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 one of them stated. Um, this CPIP concentration and volume should be the same for all of them. Drop wise, okay, shake, yeah, shake as a drop, make record of volume used to reach the point. Read the volume, that's it, guys. Then safety. This safety measure identify your hazard, the CPIP, apple or knife injury. So cut away from hand. These are, these are hazards, these are risks, what they could do to you, okay? Knowledge you. So state maybe one of them, okay? Okay, the CPIP, this, this, okay, this rule or this one of them is okay. All right, guys. Well, after recording the results, the student decided that Pearson's linear correlation was a more appropriate test to use than Spearman's rank correlation to test what the rapidness and ascorbic acid concentrations uh, um, concentration were correlated, okay? Um, so just two reasons why Pearson's linear correlation was the more appropriate statistical test. So they are checking here to know the criteria for using Pearson's linear. Okay, what are the criteria for using this? Of course, the data must be continuous. Okay, the volume and the days, the independent dependent variable. All right, they must be continuous. Now, when scatter graph is plotted between the the two variables it must show it must suggest linear correlation okay yeah, it must suggest it that these are criteria for ps it must suggest linear correlation that means all the points must form a straight line okay they must okay they, they should um align in a straight pattern a okay, straight line and of course it must show a random a normal distribution okay all the values now they are the criteria for this okay so any two from data is continuous scatter diagram suggests a linear relationship data is normally distributed normal distribution is when they are symmetrical most of the data are within they spread between two extremes in normal distribution the data spread between two extremes the lowest and highest but most of the values are within the middle range okay that's normal distributed all right so okay so this is it let's move on so this is another question quickly we've taken enough time uh, a lot of time trypsin is a protease enzyme student compare the activity of now this question too is going to be testing specifically for evaluation analysis and all of that more mainly trypsin a student compare the activity of trypsin from two different species the atlantic salmon salmon sala and domestic pig suscrofa domesticus fig 2.1 shows atlantic salmon and fig okay now, uh, do you like fish? Which which one do you love? Do you like more? Mm, this look cute. Oh, this look cute, ugly. Mm, this okay. I love fish more than this. This has a lot of oil, saturated fat. You know, heart disease, run away. It's white meat. Okay, has unsaturated fat. Good, good. Anyway, this is our sweet guys. Pork. Hmm. All right, let's go. Atlantic salmon are fish, and uh, and and how they have ectotermic that means cold-blooded which means that the internal body temperature fluctuates with with the surrounding environmental temperature the water temperature in the table in the habitat of atlantic salmon can decrease to this wow that's decrease. and this guy still survives negative 0 0.5 degrees celsius domestic peaks are mammals and maintain an internal body temperature of approximately can you see these are these will help you to solve questions these are clues okay this maintains this temperature but this fluctuates you can go high come down the student was provided with the tribes with tribes in with At atlantic from atlantic salmon forget um, pardon the typo tribes in from domestic peaks and cubes of gelatin gelatin is made from protein collagen the student measure now he measured time taken to break down all right the gelatin all right sorry it can be seen but time taken to break down gelatin right that's what's there the student used 10 cm cube of five percent trypsin solution from each animal species placed placed each trypsin solution in separate test tubes maintained at 20 degrees celsius see this is okay place a gelatin cube in each test tube of trypsin solution recorded the time taken to break down gelatin cube in each test tube the student repeated this 12 times for each Trapsin, okay? All right, so let's go to the next one. 
yeah identify independent variable and dependent variable in this experiment what are we changing here answer this question what are we changing what are we changing all right trypsin from salmon atlantic salmon fish type tri trypsin from the pig so type of trypsin is the independent variable dependent is what are we measuring we're measuring the activity of that trypsin but how do we measure it time taking to break down gelatin okay um cube all right time taken sweet independent variable type okay time taken to bring down gelatin all right let's go to the next question the students standardized the temperature of the water bath the volume of trypsin so this we standardized same Concentration of, concentration of trypsin solution state one other variable that the student should standardize in this experiment what other variables that could affect the dependent variable what other factors that can affect enzyme concentration this is enzyme sorry enzyme activity this is enzyme concentration mentioned here temperature has been mentioned all right what about okay answer it state one ph now we're using cube okay the surface area of the cube or size of cube could affect it all right that represent substrate concentration okay and of course very important um look at them surface area concentration of gelatin in the cube one mark results of the experiment are shown in table 2.1 that's the result guys um in the table 2.1 yeah what do we do use the data in table 2.1 to calculate the mean time taking four tribes in from domestic peaks to break down gelatin tube that's a replicate value okay now time for atlantic summit has been done mean has been done for you okay do this do this very quickly so this will be what get your calculator add all of this add them up right and then let's see the mean here add them up so get your calculator guys um you're gonna add them when you add them up what, what will it give you okay so if you add this plus this plus this plus this plus this plus this i think it should give you for the want of time it should give you um one hundred one thousand five hundred okay and seventy three yeah i think so yeah punch your calculator to confirm okay um yeah so and then you now divide it by the, the number so that's summation you know mean mean of this quickly mean is what hmm? you remember the formula summation of what x add up x and then divide by n so our summation of x is that 1572 so divided by x x is 12 so when you divide that by 12 so divided by 12 is going to give you what 131 check it all right so that's our mean one mark that's that's not bad okay point one second let's go on the formula for calculating standard deviation is this okay yeah that's it the student calculated the standard deviation um as this for the domestic peak use the calculated value of this and data complete calculation standard deviation for domestic peak okay this is try this calculate it hmm? do you want to do that so this has been done for you already so that standard deviation is equal to what? What is it? Equal to square root of that, everything. Square root. Now the numerator has been calculated for you, which is called one, one, zero, point, okay? Um, point nine two, okay? They have done it for us there. This is it here, they've done it for us. So we just have to put the denominator which is n minus 1. Our n is 12, I guess. So 12, 12 minus 1 is 11. So divide every, everything by 11. All right. So bring your calculator 110.92 divided by 11. Gives you what? Okay. It gives you 10.08. Okay. 3 or there about 10 point. So uh, square root of 10.010, 10, right? That's 
zero eight uh, approximately eight four. Okay. So just find the square root and then let's have this. This is gonna be what? What is it gonna be, guys? Um, that would be what? Square root of ten point zero eight four. That gives us what? Okay, three point one, three point one two. Okay, approximately three point one two. Okay, approximately yeah, three point one two. Okay, so let's see, three point one two seconds. That's um, yeah, yeah. Let's go on. Um, that's three point one two. Then look at the question. The student used a t test to analyze the data. The no hypothesis for this test was this no hypothesis. There is no difference between the time taken for trapsing from Atlantic salmon and 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 trapsin from domestic peaks to break down a gelatin. So there's no difference between that of Atlantic salmon and peaks. That's the no hypothesis. Always negative hypothesis. Okay. Then okay. Of course, the calculated value of t. That's t cal. The given us t cal. They did it for us. Thank you for calculating. Okay, T cal. This T is 2.663. The student compared 2.663 to the value on the table. Okay, that's the value on the table. Okay. Now use the table. That's the question. Now I want you to try this. Using table 2.1, table 2.2, and calculate the value of T states and explain what the student can conclude about. The result that's conclusion so is the result correct or not conclusion we are trying to check whether the data supports the hypothesis okay now look at that remember that we in t test just like in chi squared we use this to make decision that if t test t cal that's a calculated form of it right is greater than t tab the one that is of the critical probability of 0 0.05 that's um t tab we'll call it t tab okay the one on the table here okay and then um then reject the no hypothesis if that is going to reject no hypothesis okay so our t test here is given to us sorry t cal t the calculated form has been given to us as 2.2 point what okay yeah let me clean this two point that's two guys um two point what six six three and then the till till tab let's find it so is uh, is where there's intersection between um degree of freedom and um, probability of 0 0.05 okay there's intercept there right so degree of freedom for t t test v is equal to you know how we do it so degree of freedom is what n1 okay minus one mm? all right bracket okay that's how calculate it plus n2 n is population size the second one right minus uh, minus one yes so so remember that n is 12 so so 12 minus one for each of them n1 is 12 okay yeah you know what it is hmm? plus another um 12 yeah 12 minus one okay that's our degree of freedom guys for t test but for pi chi square just n minus one right now now that's 11 plus 11 11 plus 11 gives you what hmm? 11 plus 11 gives you 22 right 2 2 so we'll go to the view of freedom look for point of intercession so this is it um come here this is 22 degree of freedom 22 go to probability of 0 0.05 that's it that is the critical probability okay so that is this. This is our chi calculated, chi tabulated, right? Yeah, that's what we're looking for. So intercept between degree of freedom, which is 22, 
and 0.05 so guys what does that help us with so now that means this is going to be what hmm? 2.074074 so does this fit hmm? remember our decision says if t cal the calculated value is greater than t tab reject the null hypothesis simple so t card is 2.663 is it not greater than 2.074 this is greater than this so so what i'm going to write here okay that the calculated value for t test is greater than the critical all right the, the t value okay for critical probability of 0 0.05 which is this mm -hmm. so it's greater than it therefore reject null hypothesis and therefore there is significant difference guys there's no i obviously say there is no significant difference but here we're going to say there is significant difference but this say we should reject now no hypothesis if this is greater than this reject this reject it that means there is significant difference between the time taken from transition from as example and that of domestic peaks there is guys so let's see what the mass scheme says that's it all right critical value at degrees of freedom okay 2.2 .2 is this and this is that Crit calculated value is this mm? it's greater than the critical value that like we said no this is rejected there's significant difference at probability of 0 0.05 okay that's three marks a lot of marks so just explanations for the differences between the activity of the enzyme trypsin in atlantic salmon and the activity of trypsin in domestic peaks what is the difference mm -hmm. remember pause the video to try two marks Remember that that fish can survive at a low temperature, even as, as low as minus 0.05 degrees Celsius. Okay, the temperature of the reaction was was what? 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, the fish could survive at 0. Point, right, 0.5 degrees Celsius. Right? Yeah. So what do you think happened? That that is for the fish, fish guy. But for the pig guy, he must maintain 38 degrees Celsius. He's a mama, so he's endothermic. Sorry, um, tam, um, thermothermic. What is it called? Uh, one blood animal, right? Yeah. So, uh, can you see that when he increases temperature from this to this, what happened was the rate of enzyme activity increase for the fish so more enzyme substrate complex form okay so the reaction was fast and more gelatin cubes were broken in short time okay but when we see when this decreases so you see that temperature is decreasing so the rate of reaction will be slow for this this is increasing temperature is increasing the rate of reaction for the pig this is decreasing temperature is reducing rate of reaction for it so that is why fish has higher Okay, shorter time for reaction to occur. Can you see that? All right, so you can see that. Hmm? Idea that salmon tribes is adapted to cold that temperature adapted, so temperature is uh, forms enzyme subject at a faster rate. Okay, it's adapted, so when you increase it, it's increased faster. All right, thank you guys. Thank you. Share the videos. Um, let us know your comment. What do you need? Okay, and of course, ask questions. Invite your friends to like. All right, these videos. Thank you. See you in series two. This is Shadro. Bye.